This video tutorial is a continuation of our lesson on stoichiometry. Uh, specifically, we will be looking at limiting reactant, also known as limiting reagent, questions. When starting stoichiometry problems, we always uh, begin by writing out the full chemical equation and also balancing it. So, here we have 25 grams of lead 4 hydroxide. So, here I've written the symbols for lead and hydroxide. It reacts with uh, 30 grams of copper 1 oxide. And so I've written the symbols for copper and oxygen. Now, just writing the symbols out themselves is not enough, because this does not exist. Neither does this right now. So we have to make sure that the uh, compounds each follow the zero-sum rule. So let's take a look at the valence charges for each. Hydroxide has a uh, 1 minus valence charge. So I'm going to write a 1 minus charge above the hydroxide for rough work. Lead, on the other hand, has a valence charge of either 2 plus or 4 plus. So I've written both 2 plus and the 4 plus above the lead. Now, how do I decide which one it is? The question actually tells me it's lead 4 hydroxide. So I know it must be the 4 and it can't be the lead 2 hydroxide. So now we follow the zero sum rule in order to neutralize the uh, charges at the top. Therefore, I need 4 hydroxides so that I have a total of negative 4 four altogether, because four of these negative ones, negative four, and just one lead, which is a plus four. And if I add them all up, according to the zero sum rule, zero charge, so this compound now exists. So let me just erase all the rough work we've done here. And let's make sure that this compound now exists. So this one is copper one oxide. Oxygen has a two minus valence charge. So I write in a 2 minus valence charge above here. Copper, on the other hand, has a 1 plus charge or a 2 plus charge option. So again, I'll write both 1 and the 2 above. Now, in order to choose which one it is, well, the question already tells me that it's a copper 1 oxide. So it must be copper 1, cannot be the copper 2. So again, we follow the zero sum rule. In order to uh, neutralize the charges and have an overall charge of 0, I need to have 2 coppers, meaning that I'll have positive 2 in the end because 2 coppers and also 1 oxygen which is a negative 2 if I add them up zero sum rule so this compound is now stable let me erase the rough work and there we have it our reactant side of the equation next we follow the uh, reaction and write the product side now this chemical reaction seems to follow the double displacement pattern uh, and double displacement, essentially the cations exchange places. So A goes here now, ends up like this, and C goes here, ends up like this. So let's follow this pattern. And so we have the lead coming down here over here, ends up being uh, attached to the oxygen instead, and the copper goes over here, ends up being attached to the hydroxide instead. Notice how I have not included or attached the subscripts in yet. Uh, that's for the next step. So to uh, determine which subscripts go at the bottom, we again follow the zero sum rule. From before, we realized that the hydroxide ion has a 1 minus charge. We know that this is a copper 1, so it's a 1 plus charge. Uh, lead, on the other hand, uh, we know it's a 4, and so it's a 4 plus charge. And the oxygen has a 2 minus charge over here. If we follow the zero sum rule, 1 minus, 1 plus, well, it looks like we don't need subscripts at all because it already neutralizes itself. However, over here, in order to neutralize the 4 plus charge, I need to have 2 oxygens. So 2 times negative 2, negative 4. 1 times positive 4, positive 4. If we add the two together, we get a zero net charge, which means this compound is now stable and it exists. So please remember, it's always very important that these compounds exist because if they don't exist, then everything you're doing from that point on is pretty much worthless and your marks don't exist. So let's erase the rough work. And we now have our complete equation. But we're not done yet. We still need to balance it. So if you want to pause and uh, balance it yourself, I'll give you the answer in about one second. And there we go. Four coppers, four coppers, uh, four hydroxides, four hydroxides, uh, one lead, one lead, and two oxygens, two oxygens. At this point, I like to start uh, writing down the numbers, my givens, 
from the question down into my equation. So I'm given that there's 25 grams of lead for hydroxide, so I wrote 25 grams here, and that reacts with 30 grams of copper 1 oxide, so 30 grams of copper 1 oxide. Uh, before we continue, let me take a little detour, and let's talk about the concept of what is a living reagent. So in this case over here, I've got burger buns, uh, burger beef patty, and also hamburger. Here is my balance equation for it. I need two buns, one beef patty, to make one burger. Now, in the previous questions, you were just given one number. And from there, you can make predictions on, well, how much of the other products or reactants are going to be available. So since it's a 2 to 1 to 1 ratio, well, this is going to be half as much beef that's going to be necessary. So it's going to be half as much, 4. 2 to 1 ratio, 8 to 4 ratio, equivalent. Uh, same thing over here. Uh, 2 to 1 again, so therefore this one should also be 4. So that makes sense. If I have 8 buns, I should need 4 burger patties, and I can make 4 burgers from that. However, in a limiting reagent question, you aren't just given one number, you're given two numbers. Now you notice that the ratios don't match up. So how can we predict how many burgers we're going to create if you don't know which number to use? This is what the concept of limiting reactants or limiting reagents uh, comes into play. So over here, I've got five burger patties. Theoretically, with five burger patties, since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, I should be able to make five hamburgers, right? If each hamburger needs one beef patty and i got five of them, theoretically, I could make five beef patties. However, over here, I have eight burger buns. And according to the burger buns, it's a two-to-one ratio, meaning that with eight burger buns, I can really only make four burgers, theoretically. So who do I trust? Which one is telling me the truth? Well, it would be the limiting reagent, not the excess reagent. What I mean by limiting versus excess is, the burger buns will run out first. Once I've made four hamburgers, that's it. I have no more buns left. Then at that point, you just have beef patties. That's not a hamburger anymore. So that's excess, meaning that you have leftovers. So before I can even make five hamburgers, I will run out of bar, uh, burger buns. And so that means my true value is based on my limiting reagent. It will tell me the true value of how much I can actually produce. This, on the other hand, is just wishful thinking. So when dealing with stoichiometry in limiting reagents, we need to find out which one runs out first, which one's telling the truth, and based on it, we can use that particular number to set up our ratios. And this one over here is just non-existent because it would never happen. So in the end, I am going to make four burgers. And so with that in mind, let's try and find out which one is our living reagent, which one is going to run out first. Now, you can't just look at a number and say, oh, look at that, 25 is less than 30, therefore this is my living reagent, it'll run out first. Not going to happen. Because take a look at this, the ratios, for every one of these guys that's used up, twice as many of these guys is used up. So therefore, this one's being used up twice as fast. However, this compound is heavier and this compound is lighter. So that means that there are less lead hydroxides fitting in 25 grams and more copper one oxides uh, fitting in 30 grams. So again, you have to take those factors into consideration. So really, the only surefire method of uh, figuring out which one's going to run out first is to convert to moles. All right, so mole is equal to mass divide by the molar mass. If we take a look at this one over here, the mass for the lead hydroxide is 25 grams, and the molar mass of the lead hydroxide is 275.24 grams per mole, and if we divide that out, we get 0 0.0908 mole of lead hydroxide. So I'm going to put that underneath over here, uh, which equals to 0 0.0908 mole. And so we have mass over molar mass, 30 grams, divided by the molar mass of Cu2O, which is 143.09 grams per mole, and that equals to 0 0.2096, which I'm going to write over here. 0 0.2096 moles. Now, we're not finished yet. We can't just compare these two numbers, because take a look over here. It's a 1 to 2 ratio. So it's like comparing apples to oranges. You can't just compare them yet. So what we need to do is we need to put them on the same level. So what I like to do is to convert them all to one to one ratios. So over here, in order to bring this down to a one, I need to divide it by two. And that will bring me back to a one to one ratio. So now I can compare those two numbers. So if I divide this number by two, 
I find that it's 0 0.1048 moles. And now I can compare between these numbers because now they're on a 1 to 1 ratio scale. All right, before it was a 1 to 2 scale, so I couldn't compare that. That would be apples and oranges. So instead, I divide by 2, and now I can compare between them. So looking at this, I find that this one, lead hydroxide, will run out first because it has the smallest number. This one will still have excess amounts left over. So therefore, my lead 4 hydroxide is the limiting reagent, while the copper 1 hydroxide is going to be my excess. So any number that uh, this one gives to me, if I try to find my ratios, would be just wishful thinking. So that's just a waste of time. This will be the true value that will tell me how much I can actually make, because this is going to run out first. So let's set up our ratios. Uh, since I'm looking for the copper 1 hydroxide, because it's asking what mass of copper 1 hydroxide is going to be produced, I'm going to set up my ratios between here to here to find out how many mole, using ratios, uh, of copper 1 hydroxide will be produced. All right. So when setting up my ratios, I like to place what I'm looking for in the numerator. So I'm looking for the copper 1 hydroxide. So what I'm looking for divided by what am I? What information do I have? So since I have information about the lead 4 hydroxide, I place it down here. Equal sign. Well, I'll keep it equal. Same thing on both sides. Now we set up our initial ratio. Where do we get these numbers from? The balanced equation. So it's a 4 to 1 ratio between copper hydroxide and the lead uh, hydroxide. So I write down 4, since this one belongs to the 4, and a 1, since this one belongs to a 1 over here. And on this side, I like to write down what am I looking for. And since I'm looking for the new ratio of copper hydroxide, I'll write x to show what I'm looking for. And since I have a new number here, 0 0.0908, 0 0.0908, that's what I'm looking for. Now this is pretty uh, messy, so I'm just going to erase the unnecessary information at this point. And here we have our equation. 4 over 1 is equal to x over 0 0.0908. So I want to isolate for x, so multiply by 0 0.0908. That way they can divide each other out into 1. But if I multiply by 0 0.0908 on this side, I need to do the exact same thing on the other side in order to make it equal. So let's erase the things that have been cancelled out here. And we now have the equation x is equal to 4 times 0.0908 divided by 1, which equals 0.3632 moles. So now I know that this is equal to 0.3632 mole of COOH. So using my ratios from here to here, I was able to calculate 0.3632 moles of copper 1 hydroxide. Now it's just a matter of pumping it back up into a mass. Using the old equation, moles equal to mass over molar mass, we algebraically rearrange it so that mass is equal to moles times molar mass. So 0.3632 moles times 80.55 grams per mole gives you 29.25 grams and we can write that there 29.25 grams of the copper 1 hydroxide is produced and that is our final answer now please be careful uh, when calculating your molar mass do not multiply it by 4 again All right. so a lot of students once they calculate this one over here if you calculate appropriately it's just one copper plus one oxygen plus one hydrogen should add up to 80.55 do not multiply the whole thing by 4 again. Otherwise, you'll get 4 times your value of what you're supposed to get over here. The reason why we do not multiply by the 4 is because you already did that when you set up your ratios. All right. So when you uh, set up your ratios and you had the 4 inside, you already accounted for that. So there's no need to account for it again when calculating your molar mass.